uh, under the President's leadership this week, we've taken two important steps. First, as President Trump announced on Wednesday, the United States and Canada jointly agreed to restrict all non-essential traffic across our border. This decision goes into effect tonight at midnight. The restrictions will be reviewed after 30 days, uh, and they exclude traffic and movement across the border for work or other essential reasons. We're grateful to have such an outstanding friend to the North who is committed, as we are, to defeating this virus. Uh, I also want to announce today uh, that the United States and Mexico have agreed to restrict non-essential travel across our shared border. Both our countries know the importance uh, of working together to limit the spread of the virus and ensure that uh, commerce that supports our economy continues to keep flowing. Uh, here, too, the United States is uh, glad to have a friend who's working si side by side us in the fight. Uh, Secretary uh, Wolf will talk a little bit more about the details of how we're working alongside our partner in Mexico to keep our southern border safe and secure as well. Uh, on another note, yesterday the State Department issued a Level 4 Global Travel Advisory. This means that all international travel from U.S. citizens should be avoided. In countries where commercial departure options remain available, U.S. citizens who reside in the United States should arrange for immediate return to the United States unless they're prepared to remain abroad for an extended time. If you choose to travel internationally, your travel plans may well be severely disrupted. Uh, and finally, I want to talk about the disinformation that people are seeing both on Twitter and around the world, some of it coming from government, some of it coming from other individuals. Just urge everyone, as they're seeing information, uh, information that at one time suggested somehow this virus emanated from the United States Army, this informa uh, information about lockdowns that are taking place, uh, every American, indeed, people all around the world should ensure that where they turn to for information uh, is a reliable source and not uh, a bad actor trying to uh, create and flow uh, information that they know is wrong. Some local police officers are switching to new technology to break up crowds, keep visitors out of parks, and make sure people are social dis distancing. They are using drones. New 6's Lauren Korn shows us how they are getting results. What we're doing here at this department is trying to leverage the technology that's out there and make it fit into this mold that is COVID-19. Daytona Beach police are now using two loaner drones equipped with loudspeakers. We apologize for the inconvenience. Thanks to DJI, a drone company with a disaster relief program. And these useful tools that Sergeant Tim Ehrenkoffer says helps disperse crowds and keep people out of city parks that are now closed. Reducing the officer having to go out there, walk into the park property, walk into a crowd of people, share those germs back and forth just to deliver a message that the park's closed, don't be in. Here. The department showing drone footage from one of its 30 missions over the last week. The video doesn't include sound, but it does show people complying at Derbyshire Park. Police also demonstrated their own $27,000 drone that's equipped with a drop hook feature that officers use in situations like last September's beachside bomb threat seen here. They say it's also helpful to drop off life-saving materials. That could be anything from the life preserver that you just seen us drop in the lake to somebody drowning to a box of gloves, medication. That same drone also has a flare cam that can read a person's body temperature. Police say they're thinking about putting it in the front lobby to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Let's see if you have 103 fever. That'll come in handy with letting us know from at a glance, are you somebody who possibly has the virus? Do we need to make sure you have extra precautions? The department hopes the two loaner drones will officially become theirs once the program expires, saying it's another protective layer for an officer's safety. I think in terms of keeping officers safe, I think it's very important. In Daytona Beach, Lauren Corn getting results, News 6. All right, now dire warnings are being sounded about the nation's food supply. And they're coming despite government assurances claiming store shelves won't be left empty. Tonight, KCOMI's Jeff Nguyen did some investigating. One month into the coronavirus pandemic, there is concern tonight for the food supply. Some people who track it say we may see shortages on certain items, but others aren't so sure. Tonight, supermarkets across Southern California have plenty of food, while the coronavirus had had a devastating effect on the farming industry. In South Dakota, Smithfield Foods has closed its plants after 200 workers tested positive for COVID-19. This facility is the largest in America, producing more than 4% of the country's pork production. At least two other pork plants closed this month in Iowa and Pennsylvania. And there's more.
There's been another plant, another big plant in, in, in uh, Greeley, Colorado, that is a big beef uh, slaughter plant that has had to shut down temporarily. And, and there have been uh, poultry plants around the country that's, that have been forced to, to close temporarily because of uh, COVID-19. So there, it, there are going to be shortages, temporary shortages in the meat supply. But a representative for America's meat industry says plenty of plants are still operating. We have lots of food uh, in storage, lots of meat in storage, pork, uh, beef, all, all uh, poultry in storage and uh, on our way to grocery stores. Other parts of the food chain have taken hits as well. For now, this Alabama farmer says he'll keep going. I may overproduce and then I don't know, it may get thrown away or it may get sold at the market. Which is why some farmers have dumped milk and eggs that were supposed to go to restaurants that have since shut down. This dairy in Idaho poured about 4,000 gallons of milk they can't sell down the drain, even as struggling families around the country line up at food banks. At grocery stores around the United States, workers have gotten sick and some have lost their lives. To be clear, no one is saying the United States is running out of meat yet. In fact, refrigerated inventories are still robust. However, there is only so much refrigerator space. In Burbank, Jeff Nguyen, KCAL 9 News. The latest jobless claims cast a stark spotlight on an emerging economic crisis in America, one that is likely to worsen in the weeks and months ahead. We're going to show a slice of how this is affecting individuals and families, and then look at what more should be considered by the government. Let's begin with a sampling of voices of workers who were laid off or furloughed. We asked you, our viewers, to describe the problems and choices you are facing. My name is Dirk Bocolo. Uh, I live in Seattle, Washington. Um, I was a operations manager for a luxury travel agency. My name is Louis Vasquez. I essentially work in entertainment marketing in Los Angeles. Tamika Anderson, I'm 38, I'm from West Philadelphia. I was janitorial, I cleaned. Um, clean the office, trash, vacuum. My name is Lisa Ander, and I live in San Diego, California. I was a salesperson in a clothing store. My name is Scott Saxon. I live in uh, Kenmore, Washington. I work as a florist, and right now I'm a professional unemployment insurance caller upper. I'm not going to be able to eat. I'm not going to be able to pay my gas, my electric, my rent, to buy the things that I need to buy on a day-to-day -day basis. Just to survive. Even the smallest thing like going to eat at McDonald's becomes a luxury because you're like, oh, that 10 bucks could buy me like, you know, cereal for a month or something. We need food. We need electricity. We need to stay in our home. Those kinds of things. Then you then you just are looking at survival. I've been laid off for a little, about two and a half weeks now and still have not been able to get any sort of uh, employment insurance approved. I'm a type 1 diabetic, so um, you know the, the rising cost of insulin is something I've, I've watched from the sidelines, really, because I've always had really good employer-provided health care. But I'm looking at this sudden cutoff where that won't be the case anymore and um, kind of stockpiling as much insulin as possible now. I can't pay any of my bills for this month. Definitely not next month. <laughs> so um, I'm calling up like the banks and the credit card companies to, you know, see what we can do. I never thought that I would ever have to apply for food stamps, whatever, welfare ever again. You know, that was something I did um, at a young age when I had my son. I vowed to, you know, keep a job and keep an income coming in so I wouldn't have to, you know, do those type things again. I kept getting emails from the store. Keep, they kept pushing back the time frame. And then they were the ones that said, I think you need to look into unemployment. I hate to use the word ashamed, but I really was because I thought um, I thought I was stronger than that, I'm more prepared than that. But the longer I started thinking of how long this would be and how maybe my daughter would be affected, that's when I made the shift. It's not just about me. I've had conversations with my parents about having to probably move back home if it doesn't, if I can't find work or if I don't get approved for unemployment, which is kind of sad because that, you know, no one ever wants to think, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm about to turn 50 years old and I'm gonna have to move back home. But that's the reality of it just to survive. And we thank you for those comments you share. 
If you have faith in science, it might be hard to understand why people would gather like this while a deadly virus ravages America. Similar protests are happening across the country. Some people are here because of genuine fears about job losses and economic recession. Others are also here to push views on perennial American issues, always ready to voice their distrust in authority, disregarding the medical experts. If asymptomatic people go back to work, they could infect other people who could die. OK, that's an interesting hypothesis. It's a fact. Yeah, sure it is. You don't believe that? That's science. That's, that's indisputable. An interesting, that's interesting. If they're asymptomatic, how do they know that they have it? Or don't have well, they it. don't. That's the point. So it's mysterious. So it's just this thing that they're saying. So what? Is this all a big conspiracy theory? It's your conspiracy theory. Any organic element to this is being seized upon by conservative groups, using their nationwide networks to coordinate gatherings, making the sentiment seem bigger than the polls suggest. Well, there may be a hundred or so protesters here, and in similar small protests across the country, millions of Americans are staying at home and they don't want restrictions to be lifted. Most people know the virus itself will determine when normality can resume. These protests are being amplified by right-wing media and the president himself. Virginia, arise! Liberate Virginia! After Fox News aired a protest, Donald Trump tweeted his support just a day after issuing measured guidelines about the cautious path states should take before reopening. The experts say Virginia is in no position to do what these people are asking. You know, New York City obviously was the epicenter for a while. Uh, Virginia, we're obviously looking at a surge here and we're definitely very concerned. I think just letting things go at, at a random uh, we will lose control of this very fast. A lot of effort has been put in, a lot of good measures in terms of lockdown, and I think we, we, we need to be very uh, mindful how we go about opening those, uh, th those doors again. Like so much in America, coronavirus is now a partisan issue, with more Democrats than Republicans feeling extremely concerned about it. But this virus does not discriminate. With well over 40,000 deaths and numbers still rising, these people are going to have to wait. Amanda Walker, Sky News, 